Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff back again. I wanted to try something a little different, a little fun, a little interesting here. So, um, I was, uh, a couple years ago, uh, Mike over at Sator 42 Vinyl, uh, if you haven't checked his channel out, please do. Because um, he was doing videos on albums he bought in the month of blah, 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 2017. I'm like, how, how do you remember that? And he pointed out a feature on Discogs that I didn't really, hadn't, ex hadn't really explored. But you can export your Discogs collection or parts of it onto an Excel spreadsheet. And on top, what it does, aside from just give you all the details and stats of you know everything you've got on there, because if you look at when you added something on your actual collection, it'll say added two years ago, added you know 36 days ago, added blah blah blah. Um, but the spreadsheet spits out the actual date and time that you added it. It gives you the date, not three months ago. It tells you exactly the date and time. Something that I had never really explored much. Um, so I never really did much with it, but I thought, hey, it'd be fun. So I went back and pulled my report as of yesterday to see, I don't know, I was just looking at stats. Oh, I was doing it because of the vinyl tag. What did I buy in 2023? I did it because of the vinyl tag. I wanted to look at everything that I bought and logged in 2023. I'm pretty anal when it comes to posting on Discogs, as I mentioned, in the vinyl tag. So it's pretty accurate. An album comes in the door, I'm typically logging it in as received on Discogs as part of my collection while or before I even open it or while I'm opening it or I do it first. If it's not on Discogs and I have to add it, I usually add it within the same day or within a couple days. Depends on how popular of a release it is. Anyway, if it's popular enough to where somebody else is gonna do it faster than me, then I let them do it because I don't do all the picture stuff. I don't like, to, it takes time. So anyway. I was looking at the report for that, and a couple things stood out. I wanted to look back how many records did I buy each year. <laughs> but then for this one, what I'm looking at is starting the year off right. This is basically, I've been collecting vinyl records since 2017. So I looked back and I thought, what was the first record of each year that I posted in the Discogs? What was the first album of the year that I logged? So that is what we're looking at today as far as this goes. So we'll go ahead and start with this year, 2024, and the first album, or in this case albums, because it was really a kind of a set that came at the same time, that I logged in were the four from Riot, which I did a video on. Um, I got these all from one dealer, and they all came in right at the beginning of the year, and so those were the first ones of 2024. So now, looking back, first album logged for each of the previous years from there. 2023, Picture Perfect by 12 Stones. Um, I don't even know if they got anything else on vinyl, but yeah, you know, this this is a, a great band that I've listened to for quite a few years. Going back to 2022, first album was The Madness by Banshee. This was a No Life Till Metal reissue that came out of came out around that time, I guess. I usually order I think I ordered this right at the time it came out, so that's probably around when it came out. 2021, My Silent Wake and Everlasting Light. I have a handful of my Solid Wake albums, if you're not familiar with them. They're kind of uh, doomy at times. They're kind of, yeah, they got some screechy type death metal vocals at times on top of the doom, but they are they also have a lot of clean stuff. Sorry. Great stuff. A couple more I'd like to get from their collection. Going back to 2020, the first album was Crushing the Deceiver, limited run vinyl reissue, a uh, kind of an ex semi-extreme thrashy Christian band that came out back then. 2019 Impelitary's Nature of the Beast. So this was their newest album at the time and so probably was released shortly before that and I finally grabbed onto that one. 2018 this was neat because I literally remember like I was still in the store today the Winery Dogs live album, triple live album. This was in my local store, AFK, that I go to all the time, do the record store days and everything, one of my things. But back in the day, I would have been fairly new there because I'd only started buying albums a year before. I went in there and they had a bin of markdowns and they had this album, triple vinyl album, which was rank, rate, you know, was selling for over $50 everywhere. They had it marked down, I forget how much it was, but it was a, a great drop, like $30 or something. I told my wife, I gotta buy this, it's on white vinyl. It's a triple record set. It's so cheap compared to the usual. They had it marked way down. Couldn't believe it. So I remember buying that and that was exciting. And then flipping back to 2017. Now, I didn't have any albums at the very, very beginning of the year, but in May of 2017, I logged about 
five or six albums, which means that either I already had them and I was just starting. No, I think they probably all came in around the same time because I had been on Discogs with CDs for, you know, probably a couple years before that. So this would have been one of the earliest vinyl reissues, and that's 77 Sticks and Stones. I remember this because I supported the Kickstarter program for the deluxe CD edition. So what I'm thinking I did, because it was this one and another 77s album that came in at the same time, and I'm thinking what I did is once I realized I was getting back into vinyl, I went back to the Kickstarter program site or to the band site, and I quickly grabbed the things that I already had on CD that I could grab on vinyl, and they both came at the same time. So this is one of the earliest vinyl grabs that I went for was the stuff from the 77s. It was followed right after that by a couple from Demon Hunter, uh, Iron Maiden's Book of Souls, and those all were within like the first week or so of May that I logged those in. So then I looked at this, and this is the part that was kind of scary. Um, I looked at, I split it up and said, how many records did I buy each year? And I'm not sure if this is good or bad. I don't know if this is, yeah, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to reveal this. And you all can tell me if it's way overboard. Um, I looked at the number so far this year. And then I went back and started looking at the prior years. And I thought, when I first saw the first one, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of records. So in 2023, this is strictly 12 inches. I eradicated all CDs all uh 12 10 7 inches um anything like that this is strictly 12 inch records could be singles could be 12 inch could be picture discs whatever 12 inches is basically what this is including and in 2023 about 375 records is that is that a lot i was thinking wow that's a lot i mean that's that's quite a bit so then i got you know i was like wow is that too much and i looked at 2022 <laughs> 453 i'm like holy crud but wait, 2021, 481. So what do we see here? In the past three years, I have decreased the amount each year, which I think has been intentional because I've tried to be more selective. I fail sometimes, but a couple years ago, I started realizing it was a bit overboard, and I thought, got to be more selective and not just buy a bunch of junk. And I can see that it has helped. It has brought down over 100 records less than two years ago. The year before that, 2020 was only 367, so that's a little less than last year. And then in 2019, 347, so it was a little less than a year to follow. 2018, 255, you can see I'm starting to ramp up. 2017 was only 91, but it was probably about May that I started buying them. So still straggler of a year. I was only picking up things here and there and then kind of got into full force in 2018, and it's ramped up since then. 2024 so far, three weeks in. 45. That's not a good sign. That's more than two a day. But, you know, we did go to the antique store. I did buy a bunch of little stuff and some cheaper stuff. So um, I don't think that's going to be the norm. But anyway, crazy stuff. Just fun to look at numbers. If you do catalog on Discogs, some fun stuff. You can go back and look at your collection. If you don't, maybe you should. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of tedious to get it all in there. But once you get it in there, it's nice to see everything at a overview. You can search your collection. You can sort your collection. You can do all kinds of neat things. So it really comes in handy when you want to look at some of these stats and, and analyze yourself. That's it for this one. Just a little fun note. Thanks for watching. Rock on and rock hard.